Kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben, and that right there was a little bit of Waylon on what I like to call the Eddie Van Scalen, or the Franken Scale. I don't know which one do you think we should call it. It's this goofy little one-two-four finger pattern that Eddie used a lot, especially on the early records, to devastating effect. And it's really an interesting thing because it's not exactly a scale per se. It kind of breaks a lot of rules of traditional Western music theory but it sounds so freaking awesome. And it's a trademark sound of Eddie's. So that's what we're gonna explore today. We're gonna talk about what it is, what makes it break the rules, and how we can use it too in our own playing. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. Sign up today for access to all kinds of bonus goodies like extra videos, backing tracks, downloadable tabs, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even at that $1 a month level, is gonna get access to a very special bonus video that I'm making to go along with this one, showing you how Eddie's pattern-based playing influenced a generation of our other favorite shredders. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gear-wise, for today's video, I'm playing this incredible La Playa by Iconic Guitars. They loaned me this guitar just to check it out and give them some feedback, and I hate to tell them, but they won't be getting it back. This guitar is unbelievable. I've not stopped playing it since I got it. Now, I'm kind of using a more... you know, Sammy era tone today. I'm using the Fryat Deliverance module by Synergy, and I've got that running into the Universal Audio Aux, and that, that chorusing effect you're hearing is one that Universal Audio packaged into that thing. It sounds absolutely amazing for nailing those classic Van Hagar tones. Now, before anybody gets in the comments and says that I don't swing it like Eddie Van Halen, allow me to do the favor. I don't swing it like Eddie Van Halen. Nobody else does. So, I'm the one is the tune I was just playing right there. And that's the first time that I ever learned the Eddie Van Scalen. All that it is is this simple 1-2-4 pattern. He usually plays it from the A string to the high E string, like this. Again, it's just a shape. It's not really even a scale. And he's used that in a bunch of other solos like Jump and stuff too. But there's a few tricks to the way that he does this and what makes it work. Because it doesn't really make any sense. But here's the key to what's going on right here. So let's use I'm the one for the example right here. Uh, the original is an A flat. I'm just in regular standard tuning. So we'll be playing an A. Now, whenever he plays that lick, he's playing it over this A major kind of blues tonality. And the lick he plays goes like this. He's up an octave, and he's starting off here on the C-sharp note. You see he just went up the pattern there, doubled up on that G, and then took his back there for the very last note of it. Now, there's something going on right here that makes this entire thing work. And it's actually something that jazz players make entire careers off of. It's starting on a good note, playing a whole bunch of bullshit that doesn't really make any sense, and then ending on a good note. That way it sounds like you know what you're doing. Here's what I mean. Okay, A major is a tonality, right? An A major is made up of three notes. A, C sharp, and E. Those are the chord tones inside of an A major. Whenever Eddie starts that pattern off, it's not in just some random place. It's on C sharp, which again is one of those chord tones. Now as he plays through that pattern, by starting on a good note, then he takes us through a bunch of questionable stuff, again more on that later, and he doesn't just stop us right there at the finish line, he takes it back a note, that way he's landing on A, which is the root note of this chord. So again, starting on a good note, ending on a good note, must sound like he knows what he's doing, because he does, it's Eddie Van Freegan Halen. Now this is a lick so nice that he used it twice in the same song. Whenever it gets around to the chorus part of the tune, it's doing the changes like that, it's kind of centering us now around E. Now he wouldn't play that exact same pattern because these notes, that starting note and ending note, aren't relevant to E. 
If he's playing over E, he needs to be worrying about the notes E, G sharp, and B. Those are the notes that are inside of your E. So sure enough, he plays this exact same pattern and he starts it off on G sharp, the 11th fret right here on the A string. And again, resolving it for us here on the E note, the root of the chord. That's the magic of this. Start on a good note, flail around some, end on a good note. It was all intentional. Now, the key to knowing when and where to use this pattern is pretty simple. It works great over major chords. Again, he does the same thing in jump. And he always starts this off, I won't say always, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Um, he usually starts this off on the third, the major third, okay? Now, you don't have to know a ton of music theory lingo to uh, understand how this works and how to use it in your own playing. Here's what you gotta know. Think about the root note of whatever chord you're playing over. Let's say you're playing over a uh, C, right? You could think of finding that third in two different ways. If you're thinking about the C note that's right here on the A string, you could just go up two whole steps. So there's your root note of your chord, there's one step up, there's two steps up. That's where you're gonna put the, the Franken scale. Again, it kind of works as long as you play through it fast enough. Another way you could look at it is like this. If you're the kind of player that likes to find your root notes off of your low E string, you could just kind of think of it as like go down a fret and over a string. That's where you're gonna put the pattern, okay? That's another way to find that major third, you know? If I was playing over, like let's say a G, again, I would just go down and over. That's where I put the Eddie Van Scale in right there. Now, you know, sometimes he just plays straight up, like the I'm the one thing, and sometimes he does a little bit of picking in there, like what I played just a second ago. Eddie was never really a guy to like, play entire runs with tons of alternate picking. He kind of does that half-picked approach that I love so much. It's what Paul Gilbert, M Matthias Eklund, and a ton of my other favorite players do. It's more like you have some hammer-ons, then you pick on the way up, and then restart. Hammer-ons, pick, 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 hammer-ons, pick, 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 hammer-ons, pick, pick, pick. Just a cool way to add some variation into it. That way you're not just playing straight up the pattern, you know? That's cool one or two times, but you want to get some life out of this pattern, so change stuff up a little bit. There in the intro, I was kind of playing around with like, kind of tremolo picking the first note on every one of these shapes. Um, how did I do that? Some, something like that in there. That's a cool way to also get a little bit more mileage out of this. But yeah, generally speaking, works over major chords, go up two whole steps from the root, or you know, down and across from the root like that if you'd rather visualize it, and you're gonna be good to go to an extent. So here's the thing, a lot of players out there just learn little shortcut shapes like this one and they think, oh, I don't need to learn scales or theory or anything, I got this shape, that always sounds cool. Eddie did it, so that makes it good. Eddie was smart about the way that he did this. And again, it has to do with how he resolved these things. Remember I said earlier, he started you on a good note and ended you on a good note? That is critical to making this stuff sound good because if you're not using it, wisely like Eddie, oh man, this stuff can sound really, really, really terrible. Um, let me demonstrate here. I'm going to, to ask the heavens for some classic 1984 keyboard tone to play me. Uh, let's do a C chord, for example. Right on cue, perfect. Okay, here's the thing. Eddie starts on a good note, he ends on a good note. A lot of the other notes in here are not good notes to end on. Check this out. Not bad so far. Yeah, it's not all good in all of those um, notes that we're using right there, right? You gotta be careful about it. So think about the chords you're playing over and think about notes that are in it and where you can find them inside of that pattern. For example, your C chord that we're playing over here, it's the notes C, E, and G. So if I want to stop flailing around and land on a note, it should be one of those. So that means I could end maybe on this E note, that's fine. There's a C note right there. There's a G note right there, that works. There's another one. There's a G right there in the scale that would work to stop on. Yeah, that all sells well. 
but whenever you land on one of those notes that's not in the chord, that's when stuff gets a little bit dicey. So yeah, proceed with caution. Always try to start and end on a chord tone somewhere inside of the Eddie Van Scalen. So now that you know the pattern and a little bit about how to use it, let's dive a little bit more deeply and talk about exactly what this is. I mentioned earlier that it's not really a scale. I guess it kind of depends on what your definition of a scale is, but it's definitely no scale recognized by conventional music theory. And if you want to know the most about a scale, it's not enough just to look at a fretboard pattern. You're going to learn some stuff if you look at what notes are in it, but you're going to learn the most if you look at what intervals are contained in it. Intervals are just the distances between notes, and that's the true language of scales. If you want to learn some stuff about theory and scales and everything, you got to learn those intervals. And when you look at the intervals contained in this, stuff gets really interesting. Okay, let's go back to the Young the One example and keep A as our root note. Okay, so we're thinking of A as our root. So that means this first note that we play is a third, just like the third note of the major scale. We have a fourth, we have a fifth, a sixth, a flat seven, and the root again. So far, this is really similar to a Mixolydian scale, which is a scale used by blues and jazz and blaz and funk players all over the known galaxy. It's kind of like a major scale, but just a little bit more funky sound. It's kind of the, the Nuno major scale, if you will. Okay, so pretty normal stuff. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, flat seven, one. This is where things get dicey, is on these top strings. There's your second your flat third. What? That contradicts the regular third that we started on. Scales don't usually have a flat third and a regular third in them. Okay, there's a fourth again. There's a flat five. Again, that contradicts the regular five that we had earlier in the scale. Really weird. There's our regular fifth again. A six. A seven, okay, we had a flat seven earlier. This contradicts that as well. Then you're back at root in second. It's really strange. Again, there's contradictions all over the entire scale. That gives us this bizarre 10 note hybrid scale. Most all of our like normal major and minor scales are seven notes. So the fact that this has 10 in it is kind of strange. If I played it across a single string, it would look and sound like this. Root, second. Flat third, third, fourth, flat fifth, fifth, six, flat seven, seven, and root. When you play it straight up like that, it kind of sounds like a walking bass line from like a jazz song, right? Kind of has a little bit of jazz built into it. Maybe that has to do with the, the Van Halen family's jazz background. I don't know. But either way, if you put the notes in order, that's what it would sound like. But what's unique about this pattern is when you play it across the strings with that simple one, two, four shape, it doesn't spit out the notes in order. You know, other scales that you play, it spits them out in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. This thing kind of unfolds in a really weird way where you're almost learning more about the scale as the scale goes on. Those contradictions start to reveal themselves where you have the flat third and the regular third and all that jazz. It's really interesting. Now, 10 notes total, right? If you think about it, we only have access to 12 notes per octave in Western music. He's only leaving two notes out of the entire octave, and the rest of the entire thing is chromatic. He leaves two notes out. He leaves out the flat second, which is really aggressive sounding, and he leaves out the flat six, which again is so like assertively minor sounding, it doesn't really fit into that chromatic language of that scale. It's kind of like he leaves out the two most negative sounding intervals, right? and leaves in the ones that can sound happy and fun and funky. Sounds awesome. Sounds like Eddie, right? Definitely defies a lot of the things that you see in conventional Western music theory, but it's just so undeniably Eddie. And there's something about the way that this is put together with all these wrong notes that I think leads to something that we all love about Eddie's playing. Because a lot of times whenever Eddie is shredding through these solos and he's hitting all these notes that aren't correct and 
always seeming to like land on his feet. It's almost like watching like a trapeze artist do like a death defying act or something, right? Where you're almost thinking they're not gonna make it, but then they pull it off at the end. Like whenever I hear players like, like let's say like Michelangelo Badia, right? That can shred like 3,000 notes a minute and stay perfectly in key and in the scale and play all diatonic and stuff. Players like that is, are extremely impressive for one, but it's kind of like watching, you know, like Mario Andretti on the, the race course, right? Like the guy is in total command of the car, he's hugging the corners, totally in control the entire time. Whereas I feel like listening to Eddie a lot of times was more like, like let's say watching a classic chase scene in like a Dukes of Hazard episode, right? Where at any point like stuff's on fire, there's three wheels in the ditch the entire time. They're like jumping over Boss Hog, doing all this like impossible stuff, but still somehow, you know, landing between the lines. That's more like what Eddie's playing is like to me. And that's, that's exciting. You know, you never know if he's going to pull it off or not, but then he nails it every time. There's really something to be said about that, you know, rather than striving for the perfection, it's like embrace the chaos. You know what I mean? Play some stupid scale pattern that doesn't really make any sense, but sell it play it with conviction and land on your feet with one of those good notes. And before long, you're gonna start channeling the power of the Van Scalen. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another Van Halen Odyssey. I really enjoyed that Hang 'em High video that I did for you guys last week, so I guess I've kind of had Van Halen on the brain. So let me know what you guys want to see next, whether it's Van Halen related or not down there in the comment section. If you like this video and want to help support the channel, be sure to sign up today to that Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. You're going to get the second part of this video that talks about some of our other favorite pattern-based players that definitely learned a thing or two from Eddie. So don't delay, sign up today and uh, check that thing out, even for just a buck a month. Thank you guys so much for liking this video, subscribing to the channel, ringing the bell, calling your mom, telling her I said hi, all that other good stuff. But as for me, I think I'm gonna explore some of these pattern-based delights a little further, and I recommend you guys do too. Let's click it. More picking.